Hello, I think I am live. I think what a horrible camera filter this is. A moment, let's see if I can change that. I'm not sure I can. Hmm, that is funny. I look so pale and horrible. That's not what this is about, is it? It doesn't really matter. But let me see if I can change that. Mm -hmm. Not used to all of this. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I'm just going to have to be all weird and pale, I believe. Not important. Um, you can hear me. I look great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. God. Um, oh, it's a shame because I got this whole filter and it's supposed to work for this, but it doesn't doesn't let me change the webcam. Well, that's the last time I do it straight through YouTube. Anyway, I've got more important things to discuss. Um, last night was pretty mad, wasn't it? So I'll do a Q&A after. So prepare some questions for me, please, in the chat. But I just want to say um, a statement first to just explain everything that happened yesterday. It was pretty extraordinary circumstances. Uh, sorry, it was a couple of minutes late just now. I've been coughing my guts up. Uh, so that will probably happen throughout as well. Uh, but thank you, all of you, ex Jehovah's Witnesses and just other people who are here and, you know, supporting me. It's been uh, huge, actually. It's it's something that's not happened to me before, but it's like when this kind of thing happens and it's all over the Internet, it's something you can't really prepare for um, until it happens. And, and here we are. So um, I met Lloyd through the YouTuber community. I was more of an audio podcaster, but got him to come on my show to talk about what it was like growing up as a Jehovah's Witness, and that was around November 2020. Um, I had had people talk about their life as a Hasidic Jew, as a Mormon, an extreme Muslim, Nixium, cult, Scientology, Westboro Baptist Church, so why not? I was really interested in the Jehovah's Witness community and what it was like for Lloyd growing up. I was fascinated by cults and religions. I myself grew up in the Jewish religion. I learned Hebrew and had a bar mitzvah and all that stuff. Uh, that <clears throat> I can read it all now, uh, but only to turn my back on it and move away from it. I didn't like all the indoctrination stuff. Um, so that's an introduction to, to me and, and the, the work I do exposing cultish behavior. Uh, there's also stuff for the BBC and HBO I've done, like exposing an abusive exorcist. And uh, yeah, I'll get onto that later. Um, a year after interviewing Lloyd, I saw what many refer to as Lloyd Gate. Um, I didn't know too much about it. I interviewed between five and 10 people every week. I read all of their books, <laughs> watch the films and do as much due diligence as possible. But with limited time and resources from the outside, uh, it appeared that Lloyd was being slammed for matters that were immoral, uh, very immoral, but private. That's how it seemed to me. And I'm not one to condemn and punish. Uh, in fact, one of the things I always try to remind myself is to be curious, uh, not judgmental, never to moralize or to think I wouldn't do the bad thing that, that they did, right? Because we're human. Uh, so I hope I'm not doing that too much here. It's my nature to want to understand why Lloyd would leave his family to apparently, as he said in my uh, interview last night, you know, a data sex worker amongst all the other things that are coming out at the moment about him. Uh, and I wanted to try to disassociate that from his work life. That's what I initially tried to do. Uh, I reached out to Lloyd to offer support. He was somebody who was giving to my Patreon. He had always been nice to me. Um, and no matter what had happened, I reasoned, I don't like pylons on one person. I think people are complex. I think very few people are all bad. Uh, and even fewer are all good. Uh, later when I checked in, <coughs> later when I checked in with him, he suggested he come on my show to clear the air. Now I was in two minds about that because I'm a journalist and not a PR machine. And the awkward thing with podcasts is that it is very difficult to remain objective when that objectivity means you have to confront the interviewee. This isn't like a live interview arranged by the BBC where I find myself in a room with someone who has views that I don't like and I can argue with them and we can try to expose each other or whatever. This is me and what is basically at that point a friend, Lloyd Evans, saying, hey, what time can you do? Uh, OK, cool. Is your camera? What camera do you have? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I've got a nice one, too. Oh, should we start recording soon? And it's very hard to then be right. I'm now going to confront you about what you did. And that's part of the podcast medium. You, you see very few, and I'm talking more audio podcasts. I'm not used to the YouTube world so much, which is a little bit more frantic, a little bit more back and forward. 
Um, so it's very hard to be confrontational on an audio podcast. And after doing the interview, I felt very conflicted. Part of me thought, was I too harsh on Lloyd? Uh, we went round in circles with me pushing him to apologize. Uh, or was I not harsh enough? <coughs> After all, people were supporting him with their own money on Patreon for his work exposing the way that people are taken advantage of um, um, sexually and forced, sorry, I keep being about to cough, for the way that people are taken advantage of sexually and forced into sexual labor. And he was openly engaging in that very custom. So does that make him a hypocrite? Did he give others a break in the, in the same way, like you know, the way that he was asking me to give him a break? Did he give other people a break? Um, and, and was all this a private matter between him and his wife, as he suggests, or was this a conflict of interest for a man who had, despite his denying and, uh, you know, apparently set himself up as the leader of the ex-Jehovah's Witnesses uh, in a position of piousness, exposing exactly the kind of thing he himself engaged in. So this caused me many sleepless nights. The interview was actually a couple of weeks ago, and I began to regret doing the interview it was so unlike any other I'd done. I mean, it was just totally, I mean, I have people on, we chat, and it's very, very interesting. Thank you, I put it online. Um, I should also add that 99% of my audience are audio only. They listen on Spotify and Apple, for example. Um, so would they know about Lloyd Gate? Do they know what Lloyd Evans is? Do they know about the XJW world? I, I was really in two minds about releasing it. Would it even be relevant to them? And, and to be honest, I put it out, um, yesterday morning, and I haven't heard from any audio listeners. I usually get a few people, you know, chiming in. It hasn't done uh, particularly well on there. So to the, I would say to the one person on Twitter who was accusing me of arranging all of this to get more views, uh, I would like to remind them that the vast majority listen on audio. That's where I earn my living. And this wasn't the ideal episode for those listeners, and it hasn't done well there. Neither did I expect it to. So I remained on the fence about the whole thing and worried like never before. And on the day of the release of my video of Lloyd Evans last night, uh, hundreds of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses came forward, some quite angrily with me, to say he had been verbally abusive to them. And this is the funny thing. As a journalist from not the YouTube world, uh, from the world of BBC and HBO and uh, rigorous training and fact checking and all that stuff, I've been trained to be very, very careful about allegations and duty of care. So when I see these kinds of allegations about the sex related stuff, part of me wants to expose it. And the other part is very conscious of, you know, is this a private thing? Uh, is this going to cause more trouble than it's worth? How true are these allegations? I don't know. Um, and are we piling on? Are we intruding into somebody's mental health and publicly shaming them? Uh, but what really got me even more than those allegations, the entire day, hardly anyone at all came to his defense. Um, I said to Lloyd when supporting him earlier, weeks earlier, that, oh, you know, it's always the loudest who complain and make the most noise, you know, while those who are on his side were unlikely to make as much noise because they're just like a bit in between or whatever. But I didn't expect it to be quite so one-sided uh, because there was just nothing on his side and everything was telling me this guy has been very abusive and taking advantage of his position as basically something tantamount to a cult leader. So again, as a journalist, I felt it was my duty to look at the other side. Uh, countless Twitter members told stories of him shutting down and doxing any other XJW who might rival his channel. In my career as a journalist, I have fallen out with two people ever. Um, before Lloyd. One was an abusive exorcist I exposed for his relations with um, schizophrenic women that he was exercising. He was uh, obviously, you know, not supposed to be having sex with them, basically, was he? Uh, these young women that he exercised. That was for a BBC documentary. He ended up locking me in a room and threatening me. It was the middle of the suburbs of Buenos Aires in the middle of the night. I thought he was going to kill me uh, just because I suggested something might be going on. I mean, that, that is sort of uh, thought terminating behaviour of a cult leader. The other was Mariana Barrera, which is, uh, she's also known as the crazy baby lady, the head of the pro-life movement in Argentina. And no matter what your views are on, you know, abortion and all that stuff, uh, she's very, very, um, very extreme. And she's, you know, again, I would say a cult leader. She uh, shouts out slogans, people follow her, uh, and they live by her and her way of living. She also, she is the other person who I fell out with. Very much cult leaders. And I have an aversion to cult, uh, to cults, to group think, to cultish language in general. It makes my skin crawl and it reminds me of my Sundays in Hebrew school, learning about Jonah and the whale or whatever in a language I could read but couldn't understand. 
Um, I didn't like that and I don't like that kind of thing. Lloyd is the third person I've fallen out with. The behavior that I was being informed about by hundreds of people had parallels with some of the cult leaders I've come across. Again, as a journalist, it was important for me to remain calm and impartial while reviewing all of this new information. As the video aired, there were increasing calls in the chat for me to interview his former producer, Kim, who he initially told all of this sex worker stuff to, and who worked with him for years. Now, Kim is somebody I spoke to before I initially spoke to Lloyd, so we knew each other already, and she was very helpful, and she also assured me that she wouldn't be nasty, and she wasn't, because um, that's something I wanted to avoid. We wanted to stay professional. I, at that point, when everybody was asking me to speak to Kim, I was saying no, because I didn't want to turn this into a circus and a pylon, which, again, is what Lloyd and uh, one, or one other person on Twitter have been accusing me of wanting to do in the first place. But I really, really tried not to. But I kept reminding myself, I'm an independent journalist. I expose cults and wrongdoings when I can. And what am I doing if I only show one side of the story? And it's, that, it's the side of the powerful person here, the side of the person with the huge following, the big name, the man at the top of this. And you, it's such a hard one because you see all this stuff about, you know, Savile. Or, and by the way, that I'm not making any any uh, equ the equivalence between him and Savile. I'm just just because I happened to watch the documentary the other day. Nothing to do with him. But the the thing I am talking about is the fact that you get people uh, with allegations who come forward, and you get journalists and police and people who just ignore it and they side with the power. Uh, I, I would wager that a lot of the, you know it's easy to be angry at those people who who ignore the allegations. When you actually get the allegations and the time. It's not the same. It's like, oh, what do I do with this? You're just totally overwhelmed and you freeze. And I froze in that moment. And eventually I ran out of excuses as to why to not interview Kim. Uh, I kept putting back to the comments going like, well, I don't want to make this into a circus. Oh, I don't want to do it. And I thought, why am I scampering to find a reason not to? Well, the reason was because I was, I guess, scared didn't want to cause a fuss, didn't uh, want to betray the trust of a person, Lloyd, who I had done an interview with, I guess. You know, I look, looking back, I feel a little bit manipulated into, into feeling that way. Uh, and because when I did say that stuff to him, he did, I don't know how much to reveal, really, because it were private, there were private conversations between me and him. But I was made to feel that this would be catastrophic for and I don't want that to be the case. I don't want, you know, anything bad to happen. That is the duty of care that I have for anybody that I interview. But it did get to a point where, as I say, I had two different sides to balance. And I'm thinking, why am I only telling the, the position of power? Um, although he would say it's the other way around, that he is the one who's being bullied. And I have to take that very seriously as well. And I do. Um, so... <laughs> He got very defensive and he said, I wouldn't have done this interview and I'm annoyed you did a monologue on your audio uh, podcast, right? Because on the audio podcast, I do an intro. I don't do it on YouTube because it doesn't really do well. People don't want to hear a whole introduction. Uh, but on the audio podcast, they need to know who I'm talking about. Now, Lloyd knows I do that. I do that in every episode on the intro. But he suddenly, he described it as a monologue. And he said, oh, you know, I'm already angry, you know, upset about that. And now you want to do this to me. And it was back and forward. And at that point, I had to remind him, you know, when he was saying I wouldn't have done the interview, you know, it's not really for my interviewees to come to me with all these demands. He didn't make any demands beforehand. And he was the one, I had to remind him of this, who suggested that we do the interview. He wanted to speak through me. And I'm an investigative journalist. I'm not Lloyd's PR. I'm not anybody's PR. So look, at first, out of cowardice and fear of confrontation, I placated and I said I wouldn't interview Kim uh, because I just... I guess I just didn't need the hassle. But ex Jehovah's Witnesses kept pushing and pushing in the comments. And I found myself thinking really hard for reasons not to interview Kim, as I say. And then I thought, you know what, I have to, I have to do this. And I said to Lloyd, you know, if you want to come on as well, because he was saying he didn't want her to have the last word. And I respect that as well. So I said, if you don't want her to, you know, come on as well. And he's not camera shy. He loves, you know, he's always in front of the camera. So if he has nothing to hide, I thought he'll come on as well. And I told him that and I said, I'm, so, you know, I'm sorry, I feel we have to do this. But if you don't want to be on the camera as well, you're welcome to feed me questions and things that I can put to Kim so that we can at least have both those sides at that time. And he responded very angrily um, and suggested he was a victim in this. And he told me that I duped him into an interview. 
um, the one that he suggested we do. He said, I did that to use it as fodder for the person bullying him to bully him more. He's talking about Kem Silvio, uh, who I didn't even know about until I started researching for the interview of Lloyd. So it wouldn't make sense for me to have done this just so I can join Kim in bullying him. He also accused me of cheap tabloid sensationalism, which is very offensive for a journalist to hear. Uh, he also threatened to remove his patronage from me, which is £1.50 a month. He did now do that. I saw this morning Lloyd Evans has removed his £1.50 a month patronage, uh, which means I will not be able to have six coffees a year that I had, maybe. Um, I'd have to fore forego them. He told me Kim was a pathological liar and that if she lies on my stream, which she will, he said, he will add me to the lawsuit. I hope you think it's worth it, he said. Now, for a journalist, that is a red rag to a bull. If a journalist is ever looking into your misdemeanors and you threaten legal action, that will get the journalist thinking, ah, something's going on here. Something's being hidden here. We don't like being shut down. Nobody likes being shut down. Nobody should be shut down. Um, and I was now seeing firsthand some of what I would call, in my opinion, the cult-like behavior, such as one of the key elements, thought terminating. Thought terminating being something that many cult leaders do as a way to, uh, to they appeal to either emotion or fear, as Lloyd did with his legal talk, to stop people investigating their own actions. When I saw that, I had a physical revulsion to it. Uh, I don't like being threatened. I really, really don't. No one does, by the way. I, I, I want to make that clear. I don't mean to stand out here and say I'm some sort of victim because I got threatened. You guys, I now realize I've been getting this for years. And that's the point. So, you know, I blocked him immediately at that point. Uh, it made me feel a bit sick. I felt sick. <clears throat> I felt sick looking back at the initial interview where I enable him because I'm too scared to confront and do my job. So I felt bad about that. And I did the video with Kim. The resulting video on here is very revealing about the culture of abuse, doxing and hypocrisy, as well as the allegations about, about Lloyd, without going into anything that is unsubstantiated. Um, I haven't seen as he's blocked um, on my Twitter, but others have told me he started sharing snippets of our private chats. Uh, I have tweeted that I will consult my lawyers as this goes under the act of recording and sharing information from a private conversation with no context, without warning or asking permission. It's outrageously defamatory and an open shut case. However, between me and you, between you and me, I obviously have no intention of suing him. I, I'm not a child. I don't have to resort to that kind of thing. Uh, it is, of course, something I could sit on were he ever to instigate proceedings against me, although I consider that extremely unlikely. But I'm, you know, I don't want to be culty. I try really hard not to be. I don't want to be that kind of person, uh, some sort of leader um, who stops other people having opinions. That means no thought terminating. So I will defend myself against him through logic and transparency, not threats. So where does that leave us? Uh, on the one hand, it's not exactly my business, so feel free to discard what I'm about to say. But this is something for the XJW community really as a whole. So yeah, like I say, forget what I'm saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because it's my opinion. Uh, as I, especially because I, <clears throat> I have a history of investigating cults um, and religions and things, and I come from something akin to a light version of one myself. And since I've been unwittingly dragged into this front and center, I hope you'll allow me what are just opinions. But the first thing I would like to say is that I hope that we can stop attacking Lloyd, uh, in particular tweets about his looks or any other ad hominem insults that serve to distract from the matter at hand. His looks, his gestures, and his mannerisms are not the problem. They're fine, they're normal, they're whatever, uh, and it shouldn't matter. By suggesting that they are you know, unusual, weird, or ugly, or whatever it might be, they not only distract from what is important, his actions, but they fuel his victim narrative. Another thing to remember, and this is hard, this is the hardest part when something divisive and tribal happens, but let's remember for a second, and I know I've said this and it's boring, but he is a real person. And as I said, people are not all bad, nor are they all good. However awful he may or may not have been, he is a person and one who had a very difficult childhood, like many of us, many of you, and the abuse might just push him over the edge. We don't know, we're not inside his head. 
Now, some of you have suggested, oh, no, but he doesn't care. He's this, he's that, he's a psychopath, whatever. Now, even if that is true, now think about it. If you were a psychopath or a narcissist, what would be the only thing worse than people talking badly about you? Nobody talking about you. So whether he's a psychopath or an empath or anything in between, it doesn't serve us or any of us to continue uh, to attack and abuse, even when we feel like we're defending uh, particularly personal ones about his face and gestures and things like that. We don't need to resort to that. And I'm aware most, 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 most people are not doing that. Where do we go from here? Again, I'm not an XJW, but I'm wearing my cult investigation hat. Uh, when I echo what I said last night, uh, that is, you know, Amanda Montel, my next guest on the channel. She's out. Come and join that on Monday at 9 p.m. UK times. I do a premiere, so I'll be in the chat. Um, and she's amazing. And she wrote a book called Cultish, about, about cultish language. And she sees cults not just in religions and things like that, but also fitness gurus and jumbo juice and dance programs. Cults are sort of everywhere. Very difficult to define, but basically communities that, that make you feel like you can't leave. And that sounds a lot like the one we're discussing, not just Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, in the start, but, you know, the, the YouTube channel that many of you, became, you know, it was part of your lives for such, such a long time. And it's so difficult to leave. And Amanda Montel made me understand what that's like, because she said, like, if, if you haven't been in, a, in a, that kind of cult, try and imagine being in a relationship, a toxic relationship where you feel like you can't leave. You're letting people down if you leave. That's how it feels. So these communities also have plenty of positives. It allows us all to uh, find people that we have a lot in common with and to share and to be human together. We're a societal people, but they can be very toxic. Now, just like relationships. My favorite takeaway from the book Cultish, something I thought was genius, was that if you want to move away from being in a cult, the answer is not to go cold turkey and avoid community and affection and stuff like that. It's the opposite. Find many cults, join many cults, that's the answer. And it's a fascinating thought, a fascinating thought experiment. Many, um, like, <coughs> it's a case of, <coughs> it's a case of not putting your eggs in one basket. It's saying, okay, I like this particular YouTube community, let's say, but I also like another one and another. And I make good close friends and connections in each of these places. Lots of crossover with the same different people who come to the different channels and all of that stuff. But if I want to leave one of these places because it's becoming toxic or it no longer aligns with my views of the world, uh, as can happen with any community of humans, I need to feel that I am not giving up my whole world by leaving, that there is more for me outside of this one community. I know some excellent YouTubers, for example, if you are into staying on YouTuber who are so unculty, and would I would particularly recommend, for example, Stephen Knight's The Night Tube, um, as he's so wary of any sort of religious ideological feeling. And it even annoys me because I think his channel would be huge, uh, but he's so averse to culty messages that he doesn't work to grow it as much as he could. Now, Stephen Knight, he had an online spat with Lloyd a while ago, while Lloyd told, oh, yeah, they had this big argument about something or other. And then Lloyd started tweeting Ricky Gervais, who's a friend of Stevens, about Stevens' behavior, like telling on him, which again is that pattern that you guys have described of like dobbing on someone and doxing them and that kind of thing, trying to get people in trouble, which again, it's like, that's fine. You do that, but then your behavior better be perfect because when it's not, people are going to come down hard on you. And that seems to be what's happening. Stephen describes um, Lloyd's behavior then as a masterclass in narcissistic cry bullying other youtube channels i would suggest if you, if you were and i'm not suggesting you're looking for different things by the way it's just like where i've been hanging out a lot recently sean atwood you know i do i co-host with him on wednesdays he's just fun doesn't tell you how to live your life dr shahan das psychology of true crime fantastic eric hunley is really good about body language and behavior and mysteries like alec baldwin what he did with the guns and stuff chris williamson's modern wisdom is a really fascinating one he's a handsome man so these people are great to hang around to see and they won't make you feel obliged to stay uh, and you're welcome on my channel anytime and you can leave whenever you want that's the main thing <laughs> you can just unsubscribe you don't like something either stick it out or just leave i don't want anyone to ever feel stuck in this situation so that's what i wanted to say i hope it sort of you know shed some light on on things um let me know now if you want and we could do a little bit of q and a i really went on for quite some time there um but uh yeah do do send out some questions and things and i'll just sort of nod, nod my head for a while 
uh, in this in this thing while I'm waiting for the questions to come through. Um, let's have a look. Or just saying things, I suppose. Good to see you all, by the way. Uh, lovely Sam, Powell, hands tight, fabulously faded. Jason Parker, a human, Ray J. I love Ray J. Always there. Cherry Lane's always there. Uh, lots of great people. John, come on. Sam, uh, <clears throat> thanks for exposing uh, how Lloyd treated you. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, thanks for saying that, Marianne. Oh, thank you. Um, just reading the chat, aren't I? It's a bit of fun. What's the next Hornet's Nest you intend poking by Ray J? Oh my, can I put that up on the thing? I don't think I can. No, I'm definitely going to use StreamYard next time. Doing it straight through YouTube is rubbish. The next Hornet's Nest. Oh, I can't remember now. Who have I got coming up on the podcast? I need to, I need to check that. Oh, I've got like a schedule. I'm going to look at it. Let's look at my schedule. I forget who, you know who I've got is Chris Hansen. Do you guys know Chris Hansen? He did Catch a Predator, where he used to get these people, uh, pedophiles, to come in um, because they thought they were meeting a child. And then he stepped out and he was like, why, why don't you take a seat? So he was great. He's coming on soon. Um, num, 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 num. Um, obviously, Amanda Montel on cults. L Hardy is coming on to talk about Pentecostalism and, and how that's spreading across the world. So that's another similar thing. Lauren Manning to sort of talk about how, um, um, oh, she joined a, a hate group. It's another culty thing. She joined a right-wing hate group as a teenager and she's gotten out of it. Now, Molly Bloom from uh, Molly's Game is coming on as well. She fell into, uh, you know, she ran poker games with celebrities and stuff and it all became a drug addict and it all got a bit crazy. Uh, so there's some big guests coming on in the next couple of weeks. Um, I have watched the um, confession video, Evie. So I watched that when I was still like unsure of the whole thing. I didn't know enough about it. And I watched the first 10 minutes and it kept going. His microphone wasn't working. It was just embarrassing. And I saw him as a friend at that time. And you don't want to watch your friends in that time. So admittedly, maybe this isn't very journalistic, but I didn't think I'd end up interviewing him. So I just sort of turned it off. I just thought, I can't, I can't be watching this, you know, but I sort of regret that. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Does it surprise you or similar to other cults? Uh, Fade to X, that is. Thank you. That it is. It is similar to other cults. It is uh, that's repeated behaviour that you see. That's what made me do that video with Kim in the end. It's what sort of turned me around. It was the way uh, Lloyd behaved with me, and I, that's sort of um, selfish of me, or at least uh, narcissistic. Or I don't know what, but it is so hard for people on the outside, including me, to be able to see these things, and then you see it because they do it to you. And he started getting very emotional with me and he was using language that I recognized very quickly as cult language. Um, and that was it for me. That's when I was, that's when I was like, right, this is cult. So it is similar to cults that I have come across. Um, and, and there's always been suggestions from the outside, by the way, about, you know, the XJW community around Lloyd that have often been that kind of, you know, that kind of suggestion that he's gotten people who are very vulnerable at the point when they've just left a cult to join what is essentially another cult. And there is a lot of, again, thought terminating that goes on because Stephen Knight quizzed him on exactly that. Um, and in his response, he he was very loaded emotionally. And he said, you do not tell somebody, you know, who's, who's left a cult that they're still in a cult or something like that. And it's like, well, well, if it's the truth, yes, you do. Yes, you do. You, whatever the truth is, you get it out. If it's exaggerated, yeah, don't say it. If it's not true, don't say it. You don't need to hurt people's feelings for no reason. If it's true, those people need to be made aware. Well, I mean, we're all in cults to an extent, every single one of us. We're all in some way in some forms of cults and communities. And I think that's I think that's okay. It's just when it gets too far. Um, but that kind of thought terminating, that is the mark of cults. And I hope that I never, you know, we all we all do it sometimes, of course, and tell people, oh, don't ask me about that or whatever. I hope I don't do that. And I hope that you guys don't do it. We shouldn't be doing it. If people want to have a conversation, as long as they're not poking, you know, just to wind you up, just to annoy you or whatever, just to upset you. If they have a good faith argument they want to make, listen, debate, talk, because that is the antidote to cults. Um, thank you from Dirk. Thank you. Uh, sorry, got pulled into this. Thank you. It was a difficult night. I, I couldn't sleep. I was up at like five in the morning, my heart racing. I am not used to this. It's the same way I felt after arguing with that exorcist for that BBC documentary. I wasn't with the BBC at the time. I was doing it on my own with my friend David, who was filming. 
So we just got back by the skin of our teeth, thought we were going to die. And I was just up all night, my heart racing. I felt a bit that way last night. But honestly, the support I got from you guys was like, I didn't expect that. And I'm sorry if I haven't responded to everyone. I feel I've been responding so much. My fingers are actually hurting. So that was huge. Do you feel like you were used to push this narrative once you'd finished this interview? I did. Yeah, once I finished the interview, Nash Osborne, I did. It was I panicked both ways. Was I harsh on the guy? Did I push too much? Are the audio listeners even going to care? It's an hour of me going, are you going to say sorry? No, you know. Um, and I did worry about it. And I made the thumbnail of the video, like, I'm not sorry. And I thought that's going to be right. But he asked me to change it to focus on the bullying. And that did feel like I was doing his bidding for him. Uh, but that goes back to what I was saying about podcasting in general. It's a really uh, complicated medium where you do get friendly and you start, you know, imagine if you had a podcast and you said to someone who you've been quite friendly with, hey, come on. Or well, in this case, he said, can I come on? Uh, it's very hard to then go, right, tell me what you did. You know, it's 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 hard. David, thank you so much um, for for contributing. I didn't know people could do this till last night. I have seen Lloyd's ones where everyone's just giving him like loads and loads of money and stuff. I didn't even know um, that that I didn't know how to do it or whatever. I'd never done lives before. I do premieres normally uh, Monday and Thursday night, 9 p.m. UK time. So I, I like to be in the chat so I can talk to everyone. But thank you, Dave. That's very, very kind of you. Um, how's a uh, Watchtower study? How has this experience affected your views on JWs? Man, it's it's a, it's a hard one because on the one hand, I'm very I'm averse to suggesting that any one group of people is different to any other. So I sort of want to say, well, they're like everybody else, right? But that's a very boring answer, and it's not actually my experience because my experience, uh, and again, I don't want to I don't want to name them because it's maybe not fair on them. But there's two or three or four um, XJWs who, for the last year and a half, have been coming to my channel, even when at the beginning nobody else was. It's starting to grow a little bit now, and always commenting, always lovely even when it was something where they didn't agree at all with the subject nature they were like lovely and they were saying oh i don't really agree with that but thank you for the video the sweetest sweetest nicest people so supportive and that's another i think that's probably what pushed me as well to to do this for them for you um so how it's affected my views of you guys i i love i love xjw's um and i'm sorry that you went through all this for so long and I understand, I think, why you're, you're so upset by the revelations of the last few months. And I think that had I not had that experience with some of the XJWs in my community here, uh, and had I not been looking into cults so much on this channel, because I do lots of other stuff on the channel as well, but every now and then I'll always go back to cult stuff because it fascinates me um, how people are taken advantage of, we, how we all are, how I have been as well. And I was hooked in just as you guys were in this particular case. But love the XJWs. Uh, Thanksgiving both sides, David says. Yep, you're very welcome. Classic cult move. I absolutely agree. Um, appreciate you talking to Kim. Good question, Nash. Yes, it was. Uh, lots of people saying good question. Um, da, 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 Chris Hansen. Are we talking about because I was saying a while ago who I'm having on? Yeah, Chris Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen. Why don't you have a seat? Um, suggestions below your description. Oh, no, what were the suggestions? Oh, no, I can't remember what the suggestions were, Leah uh was it i don't know in the in the description i do have a link for monday's one with amanda montel i think you guys are going to really like that and i'll be in the chat then because it's a premiere I've edited it all <clears throat> my girlfriend called yet edit it so we've edited it all um 9 p.m uk time come and come and watch that you're gonna like that um what else have you learned any lessons from this clash with lloyd and how will it affect your future journaling kd thank you I think it's just made me even more aware of something I was aware of already, which was like, it is a difficult medium to navigate podcasting, audio podcasting in particular. Um, if you want to keep your integrity, but also interview people that were friends of yours. That's really, really hard. So I've learned a bit about that. And I think I feel much better right now, having actually done it, despite last night having a bit of a wobble, I felt a bit you know, not great. Uh, but in terms of my integrity, I feel good about, about what happened there. So maybe I'll be quicker to push back in the future. I think that happens as well with confidence. I've been, uh, that's quite, as your confidence grows, I mean, I've been doing the podcast now for a couple of years. I've already noticed I'm a little bit more 
able to push back. I'm very embarrassed to listen to my earlier episodes, my earliest episodes, and I'm very uh, sycophantic. I'm sitting there just like, oh, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, and it creates a, you know, a, a power balance, a dynamic there that isn't really fair to, to listeners. Uh, I need to be stronger. That said, I'm never going to be that really confrontational, uh, judgmental, moralizing person. I'm always going to look at the human first and say, okay, why did you do it? Curiosity. I'm curious. So that's not going to change. But I think I think in the future I'll have a better idea of how this has uh, affected me. Oh, God, I've lost the, the thread of this. Oh, Nightshoe. Oh, he's saying stuff. He's getting into stuff with people, I think. <laughs> but that's why I was saying you should go check out his uh, channel because it is fantastic. Um, oh, XJW, Jane Doe, can you explain about the Ricky Gervais thing? Well, that was also because I was talking about Stephen Knight from the Night Tube. That was, Stephen Knight's a friend of Ricky Gervais's. He's been on his podcast many times, um, on Ricky's podcast, that is. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Ricky personally as well. I know he can uh, split people's opinions quite a lot. And when Stephen had a bit of a, a Twitter spat with Lloyd, Lloyd's reaction was, to, to tag Ricky and say, look at who you're being friends with. And again, it was a sort of, you could even say it's defamatory, really, because it's, it, if Ricky would then go, oh, God, yeah, I should distance myself from this person, that could prevent Stephen from making a living from the podcast, such as uh, Ricky's influence. You know, I don't know the ins and outs of that, but, you know, it's it, it showed the sort of, I didn't want to have a go at Lloyd, that's the thing. I don't like having a go and dobbing anyone in. But it's how he appears to operate. And the, I'm learning that more and more the last couple of days. I've seen how he operates. Uh, Sam, Andrew, do you really think that Lloyd is running a cult and he's a cult leader? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's defamatory to say so. But uh, I, I would first by, I would start by saying what my definition of a cult is. And, and having read this book recently called Cultish, I think the consensus is that we don't know what the definition of cult is. It changes uh, from person to person, country to country, our ideas of it. <clears throat> As I say, fitness groups and juice groups are, are are in many senses cults, and in that respect, so might Lloyd have been. It's also important to to notice the difference between him and someone like the Nixium cult, where Keith Ranieri was literally branding people with a hot iron with his initials. So that's on one side, and you've got fitness groups on the other side. And maybe if it's a spe spectrum, Lloyd was somewhere there. But the point is, people were leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses who were very vulnerable and had a hole suddenly that had to be filled somewhere. And whereas I'm suggesting you need to try and fill that hole, and by the way, this is just my opinion, please disagree with me. And that's very important as well, because I don't want to be one of those guys, this is what you have to do. Um, it is my opinion that hole needs to be filled with lots of different uh, entertainment and communities and things like that, rather than one big one. That's where it can go wrong. And from what I've heard, and these allegations and things, um, Lloyd was quick to shut down competing uh, Jehovah's Witness channels and things like that. So those are hallmarks, as, along with the thought terminator, those are hallmarks of cults. It's somewhere on the spectrum of cults, cultiness, uh, like we all are. So that's what I would say about that. But I'd be careful. You know, I'm, we're not talking about one that's like, you know, again, the Nixium one. They were, after branding them, they were they became sexual slaves and stuff like that. So there are, there are huge, there are levels way beyond that. The, the Heaven's Gate one, uh, they all committed suicide. Um, they thought they were moving on to meet some sort of alien life. Jonestown apparently committed suicide, although I think there's actually a lot of evidence they were killed. Uh, because anyone who wanted to leave didn't want to commit suicide, uh, was killed there. So we're talking about hugely different levels. Um, Don Rage, what do you think about argument that using sex workers and advocating for abuse survivors is not incompatible? Oh, would the argument fly with any other journalist or is Lloyd living on another planet? Yeah, well, that is that is the issue at hand, really. And it is that thing, you're weighing up two things and everyone will feel differently about it. You've got family private life where you, you could do anything. You could be horrible, you know? There are examples of, for example, people who've gone on dates with celebrities and they've then brought up, oh, that guy was horrible on the date. And it's like, well, did he commit a crime? No. Well, it's private, unfortunately. He's just horrible. He's allowed, you're allowed to be horrible. You're allowed to be mean. Uh, I don't think you're allowed to use sex workers, but then I'm not going to judge people who do because it's not really my business. And a lot of people do horrible things and judge not lest ye be judged, if I may use a religious whatever. Um, if you are going to set yourself as an advocate for that kind of thing, for sex rights and stuff, I agree with you that it's not 
it's probably not compatible with what he did. So, yeah, I would agree with you, Don Rage. I don't, I don't, I think, you know, you know, it's like setting a rule for um, lockdown and then going to a party, you know, if, if a friend of mine went to a party during lockdown, I'd go like, good on you. I like people who break rules. It doesn't mean I'd suggest people do it, but if someone does, I'd go, oh, yeah. I, I like rule breakers. I trust rule breakers inherently a lot more than everybody who sticks to all the rules. However, if you made the rules and then you don't stick to it, while others do stick to it, so the party gate was a good idea, a good example. Uh, you know, people couldn't see their dying children in the hospital, and these politicians are out just having a party. They made the rules. Lloyd, in many respects, made those rules. He was very pious and judgmental about exactly that kind of thing. And then he was exposed for it. And how often, you know, the late Christopher Hitchens used to say, when somebody was incredibly pious, whether it be uh, woke culture or whatever, you know, that kind of thing of I am better than thou and uh, we're all victims and all that kind of thing. He, Christopher Hitchens used to set his watch, he said, and in a matter of hours, days or months or years, that person would almost always be exposed for hiding something themselves. There's ample evidence that those who virtue and vict victim signal more than usual, and that's not everyone, by the way, but a lot of those people are more likely to hold dark triad personality traits, uh, psychopathy, uh, narcissism, for example. Um, we saw, obviously, recently the Savile documentary, again, totally different level to Lloyd. We're not talking about anything similar at all, no comparison, except for that thing of, you know, hiding in plain sight to an extent. Um, IICSA participants frozen when I was asking about, I don't know what they are. Child sex abuse, I guess, and I don't know what the II means. Someone will have to tell me. Well, how many questions are there? Let's have a look. So I've got going 15 minutes. We're off to see my family. Um, dating a sex worker in Thailand, did he explain? No, he didn't explain Jehovah's Witnesses' beliefs discussed and about dating. That came out in the interview and somehow I missed it the first time round. And I said to my girlfriend just before, because she's editing it, I said, um, you know, how did I miss that? And she said, I told you the next day when I was editing it. And I went, oh. And somehow it slipped my mind because I'm not, I'm not perfect. And I just, I'm doing a million things. And at the time, obviously this is a huge thing in the XJW community. But for me, that was like, oh, it's another interview. I do eight of these a week. It's another interview. Okay, whatever that is. Okay, put it out. It's only when I heard it back and people were commenting, dating a sex. Maybe he misspoke. Maybe he misspoke. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Um, the vast apostate hour, Andrew Gold, do you think it's appropriate for an admitted sex addict to be in close proximity with CSAs, uh, child, child sex abuse? Again, that's a really, really complicated answer. And, and uh, you know, as for what I was saying before, in terms of, I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to pile on and add things. And when we put these things together, we're as bad as what Lloyd did, I think, because what Lloyd was doing, I kept saying, you know, these people were potentially sex trafficked before they became sex workers. And he was saying, I never had sex with anyone who was underage. Um, I have heard, no, that doesn't matter, but yeah. <laughs> um, so I never, yeah, with anyone, and I was, that's a straw man because that's not what I asked or said. And he's going, everyone I have was, they were all adults. And I'm going, yeah, but what I'm saying is they were, you know, manipulated or whatever as children to, to get to what they are now. Now that kind of logic, this by a similar thing, okay, could any sex addicts be in close proximity with CSAs? We're also being a bit straw manny. And I know the temptation to say that, but I would say a sex addict who has had a history uh, with CSA and all that, with that kind of thing, with that's different. But if we're talking about adult um, stuff, then it's, I, I, I don't see why uh, they, they, it should matter. I hope that makes sense. I'm sort of stuttering over my words. We're trying not to cough. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's see. How is this virtue of you and JWs and whether you'd be interested in looking into the cult further? Watchtower study. Yeah, I addressed that um, a little before. Oh, you've got a little picture of uh, Brett from Flight of the Concords. I love that. <sighs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I addressed it before, and I just say I love the JWs. I've got a great relationship with them. It's not just now. Obviously, I've got loads of new subscribers from you guys now, which I really appreciate and I love. And more than anything, I love the messages and things I'm getting. I'm trying to reply to as many as I can. If I miss you, it's not personal. It's just like quite suddenly, it's a lot, and I, I just miss. I go down sometimes. Like, how did I miss that one? So just say hello again if you want or something like that. I honestly, I honestly don't mind. Uh, love the JWs. Um, as for looking into the cult further, not against that. Um, <coughs> if there's a big, good story, 
always, you know, every few episodes, I change completely. You know, there's a psychopath one week, there's a murderer the next week, there's a cult survivor the next. It's just whatever floats my boat that particular day, two episodes a week. So I need to fill the space as, as well. I've got to find interesting things. There is, um, you know, um, there's been Scientologists, Mormons, there have been like cults I've never even heard of. If a big story or an interesting um, person comes my way for JWs, like, why why not? I'd love to. I love, I love the... I'm very interested. What I would say as well is there are so many crossovers and similarities to most of the other. Obviously, each one has their own individual stuff. But once you get past the surface of Scientology, of Hasidic Judaism, of extreme Islam, all those things, there are so many similarities. And I think you could all relate to one another. Uh, and there are plenty of episodes on my channel about all of those people. Uh, is Janet available now? Oh, John. Um, you didn't push him. Thank you, XJW, PR star. Maybe, maybe, but, you know, I'm a bit embarrassed of that initial video now. <coughs> uh, Nesbo, do you think he's being deliberately manipulative or does he believe his own narrative? Uh, I think it's somewhere between the two. It's sort of a cognitive dissonance. It's a thing I always ask myself. So for that exorcist, you can get that. You can see that, by the way, on YouTube. I don't get anything for it, so maybe don't bother. Uh, but it's an enjoyable documentary um, where I expose that exorcist. And I've been asking myself for years, does he really believe in his powers, that he can cure people, or is he a manip manipulative psychopath? And I think it's probably somewhere in between, like a narcissist who tells himself on one level that this is true and real and deep deep down probably knows that it is not so i think there is manipulation going on but he's, it's 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 uh, impression management really and i think I, he probably does think he's being wronged and i think there is very little in the world more uh damaging and dangerous than victimhood and I think if you look back to most atrocities, it comes from victimhood, that feeling that you've been wronged. We all get it. We have it since we're children. And we have to learn as we get older, well, I have to accept maybe I'm in the wrong, maybe I wasn't wronged, maybe they didn't mean it. For people who take everything that's said to them very personally, uh, if you look back through history, look at um, the Nazis, the Nazis didn't go about going, we're going to kill the Jews because wah -ha -ha. they said, hey, the Jew, we're the victims. The Jews are stealing our work. Our, our money, they're taking everything from us. We have nothing left. We are the victims. And out of victimhood sprung Nazis, out of victimhood even more obviously sprung the uh, Soviets at the same time, the uh, communists. Uh, they went around burning the farms of, of anybody who was successful at farming because they felt that they were victims because they weren't as good at farming and stuff like that. So victimhood is, is a really, really scary, probably the scariest trait that I can think of in a person. And I, you know, there is no doubt that uh, Lloyd, the victimhood is strong with Lloyd. It's all about bullying who has bullied him. And there was very little apologizing to the community. So I think he does believe in, in himself. And I think it's uh, a scary thing. Uh, Prince Mushkin, did you feel there was an air of misogyny in Lloyd's outlook? <coughs> I should get through these a little bit quicker. I, uh, I don't know enough about that. I don't, I, I wish I could answer on that. Um, and I don't mean to just add more things to the attack, really, you know. So uh, I don't, I don't know. Marianne Lockwood, uh, one of my favourite people on here. Do you think you'll change your interviewing style? Do you chalk this up to a learning experience? <sighs> no, I think I won't, because I didn't get into this to expose people necessarily. If something like this happens again, I might be quicker to say to the person, "Listen, there is a lot of opposing voices at the moment," and. I have to see the other side. And it's a very hard one because then they might say, well, I'm not coming on then. And we don't get to have that debate and he doesn't get exposed in the first place. So it's like you've either got to have that awkward debate and they don't come on and you don't get to expose that person. Or you have them on and then you have someone else on and it feels sneaky. It feels like you've tricked them, even though that wasn't the intention. So I don't think I'll change how I am. I'm not sure. Unless enough people push me to it. Unless I... Here's the thing as well. Nothing's written in stone and... Uh, I change my mind on things every day. So, you know, I feel differently to how I felt yesterday. How will I feel in two years, five years, 10 years? Um, Fast Apostate, thank you so much. What a generous uh, donation thing, support, thank you. Do you think it's appropriate for an admitted sex addict to be included? Oh, I've already done this one, didn't I? Am I going through the same ones again? I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, my answer to that was, uh, 
was I think I think it is probably okay. I wouldn't say appropriate or desirable, but I think it's fine unless he has some unless there were to be some relationship with uh, underage whatever. And uh, I've heard nothing substantiated about that at all. Um, 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 lots of great questions. Lots of questions. I'm probably missing loads of them. Feel free to ask them again. Uh, Fade to X. How do you feel about making money out of activism? Bloody good point. That's a fantastic question. <clears throat> As I said from last night and today, it's the first time I've ever had that. What I do is not activism. Um, there's a bunch of things that I try to do when I get people on the show. It's like, what do I want? And it's a mix of things. But the main two things, I want something weird and strange and different. So cults, psychopaths and whatever. I had a woman on who could rem remember every moment of her life since she was a baby. So she claims she can remember in the womb. And I asked her, you know, can you remember what happened on the 7th of May, 1995? And she's like, oh, I went, I went to see Babe in the cinema. That's the kind of thing where it's like different and weird and strange and just something you've never seen before. It fascinates me. Like that gets me up in the morning. The other thing is it has to have some level of profundity. It has to mean something, right? What it meant in that particular case was that this was a woman living with a condition where she never knew what time she was in. She continued arguments suddenly from seven years ago with her mum. And her mum would be like, that was seven years ago. She was constantly stuck in the same sort of moment, all time seemed to happen at once for her, this very rare condition she had. So there has to be a level of profundity to it. So again, cults, if you look at the JWs and the Mormons or the Hasidic Jews and stuff like that, you're looking at something that is weird and strange because most of society has never seen or got a glimpse into these places, it's fascinating. But you're also looking at something incredibly profound. And that makes for a mixture of entertainment, but intrigue and education. But what I do could not be classified, I don't think it's activism. And that's probably why I was so slow to get the other side on this story. So that's the thing with what Lloyd was doing. It was activism very much, and he was getting a lot of money out of it. And I just think it's a, it's a gray area. I don't have a, you know, on the one hand, you could say it's not right. He's, you know, he's profiting from, you know, and, and, and the problem, this is a little bit like Arsenal football TV. You know, I, anyone who's into football might know about them. They, they run this, this show that's hugely popular on YouTube football show and they follow the team Arsenal and they get more views. I had them on my show as well. I'm not an Arsenal fan, but this just intrigued me. They get more views when Arsenal lose. So the question put to them all the time is like, if your team loses, you do better. So surely you're not, there must be a, a conflict of interest there. Now, obviously that's football and it's silly, but when it's activism, it starts to get quite serious, serious, especially about cults and things. So if you've got a cult that you're trying to expose and everything, the worse the cult does, the more every time the cult did another horrible thing, you know, you get what I'm saying. Somebody like Lloyd would be able to profit from it. I'm not saying at all that he enjoyed that. And the, the Arsenal TV guys said they did not enjoy when Arsenal lost. But it does make for a difficult relationship. That said, you know, it's a full time job what Lloyd was doing. So if he didn't make money out of it, how was he ever going to do it? So those are the two sides of it. I think it's a, it's a complicated one. Um, lots of nice things. Thank you, Evie. Uh, channel. Oh, exceptional. Thank you, Gail. Ah, oh, Gail was off and around here. Uh, she's great. Uh, Cherry always here as well. Thank you. Hangs lovely. All these lovely regulars. Um, something about Tibor from Jones Witness Beliefs Discuss. I don't know who that is. I think it's someone. Uh, I promise I'll stop that. It's all about me. It's the, it's the picture of Lloyd. It always scares me when I see it. Bloody hell. Uh, stay, oh, I've lost well, I've lost it a bit. I've lost the thread, so I've probably missed a few. Quick. It just goes to the bottom suddenly. Uh, Marianne, I've enjoyed Andrew's channel for more than two years now. It's not always a comfortable guest, but it challenges you. Oh, thank you, Marianne. Uh, it would be good if Andrew could dive right into the community because those throwing the stones are just the same. Kim and Mikey is Marco. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Um, you can't sue everyone, Petal says. I agree. Uh, and I'm not going to sue him. I said it on Twitter. I said I would. But obviously, I'm not going to do that. It's ridiculous for a stupid Twitter spat. Uh, <laughs> more stuff from the fake Lloyd Evans there, which scares me every time I see his face. Um, are you prepared? Don Rager, are you prepared for the probability that Lloyd will try to get revenge? Don't mean to scare you, but just have you thought, prepared yourself for it. Well, what could he do? I mean, he can make videos about me. There's very little about me. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it what it could be. Uh, he's already put out screenshots. I've told him that I'll sue him. I'm not going to sue him. I, I'm not sure he can put out more videos about me, and it will be more publicity for me. So good on him. 
I say that, I'm acting all hard. I don't like it. It's not a nice feeling. Shabbat shalom, Yonah Shalom. Uh, Shabbat shalom to you. Or something like that. It's a bit of Hebrew. Arsenal's a crap team. Cat, if I knew how to get that up on the screen, I would put it there. Um, uh, what about the market? Probably, I don't know about that. Geheimen van, secrets of Jehovah's. That means I speak German. I speak five languages. What do you know about that? Isn't that interesting? Uh, maybe I show off about it all the time. Uh, uh, and that's it. I think we're all caught up. I am really sorry. If, oh, Young G, your ex-BBC was the political bias mandated by the BBC. How did you find working for them? Uh, awful. I didn't like working for the BBC because I didn't really work for them. I, I worked freelance and I sold my documentary to them afterwards. They underpaid me and took advantage of me and my friend David. We made the film ourselves. They paid us almost peanuts and made us make loads of changes um, and, and employ lawyers to check everything with that exorcist and everything like that. And the lawyers ended up costing more than what they paid us. And they made sure that we couldn't sell the documentary elsewhere and that they would take the rights in perpetuity, which is very, very rare for a TV channel to do. But they, um, they knew that they could take advantage of us. And I think that it's a bit of a hypocrisy because the BBC is constantly trying to show us that they're not like a, a business, you know, that we have to pay the taxes because they're not a business. They're like uh, Auntie Beeb, you know, but they treated me and my friend David very much like they were a business. They saw that we were desperate, that we had no other options, and they took advantage of that. And that's OK if you're a business, because that's how capitalism and businesses work. And I enjoy the fruits of those things and have to understand the bad side. But if they're going to claim that they're not a business and we have to pay their taxes and stuff like that, then I I don't know. They, to me, they they treated me very much like a business. So that's what I would say about BBC. I sometimes still write ex-BBC because it obviously gives you some sort of credit. Uh, people watch your stuff. Uh, thank you, cat meow, meow, meow. <laughs> oh, I love that. On the edge, where can I see you film? The exorcism film, if you just type in YouTube, um, um, what is it? Exorcism, Andrew Gold, BBC. You'll find it there. Eventually, I might put it on my channel because I just think, screw them, you know, uh, screw that. And I'll just do that. Uh, Nesbo, will you let us know if you do get an letter of this case from Mrs. Lister? Yes, I'll do a stream about it. <clears throat> so that'll be funny. Uh, Mr. Daz, everyone take a shot. He mentioned the five languages. What does that mean, take a shot? I don't know what that means. Um, what five languages do you speak? Okay, well, English is one of them, so it's a bit sneaky that I count that, but you've got to, don't you? I didn't say I learned five languages, because like, I already spoke one of them, it's English. Uh, après, je peux te parler en français si tu veux, parce que mon français, c'est bien, parce que j'ai vécu en France à Montpellier pendant deux ans. That's my French and uh, my German. Uh, oh, God, ich habe ein bisschen Deutsch gelernt, als ich in, in Deutschland war, aber mein Deutsch ist nicht so gut uh, jetzt weil ich ein bisschen vergessen habe. Um, y Spanish. Y puedo hablar en castellano si queréis, pero bueno, mi castellano es un poco mejor que mi alemán, porque es un poco más... Hablo con la familia de mi novia. And uh, yo puedo te hablar en portugués, si vos se quiser. Um, so that's a bit of Portuguese. My Portuguese is, uh, is on the wane a little bit. So Portuguese, Spanish, French, German, and English. And I can read Hebrew. And I can, and I can do... Um, what's it called? Um, shorthand. I had to learn that as a journalist. BBC suck. Agreed, young G. Yes, thank you for subbing. Uh, thank you all for subbing. Your legends. Italian, sono contento di vederti, Davide Angeletti. Is that how you say your name? Uh, contento di vederti. Happy to see you. Uh, it's the Andrew Gold drinking game. <laughs> uh, I just speak English and JW. Yeah, well, that is, that's exactly what Amanda Montel is going to talk to us about Monday at uh, 9 pm UK time. It is cult speak. The, the language of cults, it's really, really fascinating. Thank you again, all of you for turning up. Uh, I'm so, so happy to have all these new supporters really, because it was uh, a bit of a moment last night. My, my partner will tell you that I was in a bit of a state actually, I'm not used to this kind of thing. I shaved off my beard to not look too haggard after all of it. Um, and have a have a lovely day. I hope to see uh, many of you on Monday. Please comment under, it's good for the algorithm. When this finish, as soon as this finishes, uh, put a little comment get the algorithm i don't know i don't know how to do youtube but just put a, and click the like that's a thing marianne i always forget that she always helps uh with that and hangs tight all the guys in, in my they all, you will help usually and say remember to hit the like and all that stuff um thank you everyone for your kind words have a lovely day it's a lovely sunny day in england i don't know where, wherever you are i hope it's sunny at least inside 
that's a nice thing to think, isn't it? Uh, and yeah, much love. Hope I didn't say anything um, defamatory or something. <laughs> oh, golly. Um, yeah, be well. <laughs>